So, you suck at drops. Today I'm gonna give you some tips to improve your riding and hopefully take your skills to the next level. And here he is, Jeff Lenoski. My name is Jeff Lenoski, and I've been riding professionally for over 25 years. I started out as a bike trial specialist trying to ride my bike over everything in my path. And I mean everything. Nowadays, I enjoy tackling the most technical mountain bike trails I could find. And if those aren't difficult enough, I'll make up my own. I love sharing my knowledge with fellow riders to help them improve their skills. Ride with me and I'll show you how to be a trail boss. Learning to do drops on your mountain bike is really important. If you ride enough trails, you will come across some drops and chances are they're gonna be a surprise. So having the skills to do them properly will make your riding much safer. Before we get into some of the most common mistakes I see, let's do a quick overview of how to do a drop. When you're doing drops on a flat, predictable surface, the best way to do it is with a medium speed. As you approach the edge, you wanna have your weight centered over your cranks, pedals level, light hands, heavy feet. Bend your elbows and knees, and as you approach the edge, rise up and slightly shift your hips behind your rear axle. As I previously mentioned in my manual video from this series, getting your hips back behind your rear axle can be accomplished one of two ways, either shifting your weight back or using your arms and feet to accelerate the bike forward. Whichever one makes more sense in your mind is the right way because the end result is the same. Once you're in the air, stay loose, spot your landing, and ride away safely. The first mistake I wanna address is important because the second two build upon the same thing and that is a general mistiming of your preload. What is preload and why is it important? Preloading is the act of pushing down into your bike and loading it in one place, say it could be light in another. And when you do a drop, you wanna be light at the takeoff. When you're doing a drop, it's important to remember that you're not trying to lift your front wheel in the air, you're just trying to keep it from dropping. The moment your front wheel leaves whatever object you're on, it wants to start falling down because you still have something under your rear tire. So the faster you're going, the more subtle your movements need to be. And conversely, the slower you're going, you need to do much more dramatic movements to keep that front wheel from dropping. The lighter you are at the takeoff, the less weight you have pushing your front wheel down. So it allows you to use much more subtle movements to keep it from dropping. The best way to improve your timing is to find a drop similar to this. Something that's gonna require you to do a drop, but something that's not tall enough to send you over the bars. And then approach it at a whole different variety of speed. Keep a nice, smooth, consistent preload, but when you're going really slow, it might be real close to the end, and if you're going super fast, it could be several feet in front of it. Now that we've talked about how a good preload can minimize the amount of dramatic body movements you need to make to keep your front wheel up in the air, that brings me to my second most common mistake, and that's manualing off drops. A proper preload will eliminate your need for a manual and instead use just a very subtle weight shift, which is much more consistent. That brings us to my most frequently seen mistake, and that is hopping off of drops. When you hop off of a drop, you're taking all the benefits of a proper preload and adding a whole extra level of difficulty because instead of just being light at the takeoff, you're actually lifting your bike in the air. This is bad for two reasons. First off, you're adding additional height to every single drop you do. That just makes it more difficult. Secondly, you're adding a whole extra level of consequence because this technique is completely reliant on speed. If you're going nice and fast, you should be able to clear it. When you're going really slow, you risk flipping your back tire on what you're trying to jump off. Having the ability to ride a variety of different styles of drops safely is a skill set every rider should have in their toolbox. Practicing drops going really slow really helps you refine your technique. And then as you add speed, you do everything the same, just less. Thanks for checking out the video. If you've made it this far, please consider subscribing and also check out my online coaching group that I'll link to in the description below. 
It's a place where you can talk all things bikes with like-minded riders and receive online coaching from me. That's it for now. Until next time, get out there and be a boss.